This is going to be a uh, screen recording for paper two for the new ACE Marine Science exam. Um, all right, I'm not going to go over this top part again, but this is definitely going to be a test that you're going to want the pencil for and the good eraser I've been talking about. Um, if you cannot erase any broken lines, maybe lines that look like this, any stray marks, that part right there, um, it's not going to really be acceptable. Anything like that won't be acceptable. Um, it's picky, but we've gone over biological drawings, and then I did some extra examples and supplied them for you in class. Um, no matter how you're feeling after today's test, um, admittedly, today's test was a bit more difficult than what they've had, and in, in, in that might just be my bias because it's a new syllabus. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, there were some questions I was like, what, why would that be on there? But again, you know, no better do better. Um, this is the first time that I got to see the new exam um, after what I've been, you know, teaching for the past four years, five years. Um, but it, you know, like I said, as long as you tried at least half, um, like that 10 question mark one, all of that was the notes that I made for you that you guys did in end of March. Um, that, uh, and it was on the back, so hopefully you turned it, or if you didn't turn the page, then hopefully you highlighted your marks and were kind of counting them and realizing, like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm short 10. Um, but how um, nutrients can get, like, recycled or um, replenished in the ocean, uh, you guys had, like, I think, like, four different pages for that. So, um, you know, you got the atmosphere, so things can dissolve in, like carbon dioxide creates carbonic acid. Um, for that explain, again, you want to just add all those details, carbonic acid, also is using um, for photosynthesis, synthesized glucose, corals can um, add it to their calcium carbonate skeleton. Um, you got like on land, so you could have runoff coming from land, um, brings in toxins, can bring in fertilizers, cause an algal bloom or eutrophication, also stuff you guys did back in March. Um, you have tectonic things, so hydrothermal vents back from October, November, and that can add in minerals. Uh, you also have upwelling, so another um, common theme from like November, December, that can replenish. Um, something I was thinking about too, that CO2 creating carbonic acid could dissolve shells, and that could create uh, or have extra like carbon and calcium being released from, um, sorry, from the coral skeletons. Um, and things that happen within the water column. So you could have excretion, egestion, um, organisms die, and then there's decomposition. All of those, and that decomposition is part of the biotic cycle. It's really re important for, um, for uh, replenishing nutrients in the ocean. Hey, Ollie. Hey, Ollie. When Sophie wants to come back in, would you open the door for her? Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Okay. So just, yeah, just thinking out loud about that Tamar question. And then, you know, like I said, if there's one that you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea, right? But you're confident that, you know, you followed the material with me. You know, you've gone over this stuff from um, first semester as well. Um, you know, plate tectonics was right there. And so I was like, oh, I'm so glad that I reposted on Monday um, the, my plate tectonics stuff because, yeah, I just felt better about that. But the salt one, I don't know. But if, if you think it's crazy really or not, like, a, a great really question. I really want this game. Okay. Did I tell you Morgan right now? Really, really, really. You're being recorded. I really, want, I really want to get this game back. Tomorrow. Okay. Deal? Why? I'm, I'm literally recording right now. You're Like, I'm doing what? work and you're, you're being recorded. So, just, can you give me 10 minutes? Like, I want you. To... I said 10 minutes. I yes, ma'am. I just want you mm -hmm. to not do Sorry about that. If I pause it, it's going to probably do a distortion. That wah, wah, wah. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you give, if you give me 10 minutes, we can talk about it. But I can't talk about it right now, okay? I just. How I, many minutes? I, I don't want it tomorrow. I don't want you to do it tomorrow. I understand. I'm going to continue to work. Okay. And I just want to get it. All right, Olive. How many minutes did I say? How many minutes did I say? Okay. And you I'll got, and you, you got to have the volume down. Can I see that real quick? I can fix that. Okay. Can I see that? Okay. 
Okay, you got it. All right. Thank you. Sorry for that. Yeah, I don't want to pause it because that's what happened with the coral one. And then whoa, 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 don't want that to happen. So we've done this question in class. Uh, I did it with you. So um, key things with this ruler have to have it. Um, your label lines are done in pencil. It's for the label lines. The lines need to touch the structure. Now the label lines can be diagonal, they can be horizontal, they can go up and down. They, you cannot label the actual terms on the picture or on the organism. It needs to be outside or on the sides of it. And the labels themselves need to be written in ink. Okay, and um, they are written horizontal. So they need to be written like this. You do not need to give them an underline. Do not give them a box. Do I know if you'll get marks with the box? I don't know. I don't know if they will allow that, but it's, it's not like a proper technique. Okay, never highlight this. Never, never, never. I'm gonna erase some of the stuff that I just wrote so that I can use that space to label. This is an easy four marks. Let me see. I think there was a way that it could like assume a straight line. I don't know. That may have been on like one note. It, I think it is on one note. All right. Obviously, I don't have a pencil, so I'm going to do my best. Um, nematocyst, mouth, stomach, and tentacle. Nematocyst was a vocab term. And um, last week, Saturday, um, I quickly made some like quick slides for the corals, which felt very validated about today when you had to do the coral and so Zantheli. And I know I talked about that on Monday in class and then again on Tuesday. Um, and then, you know, the video that the like, quick one I did early Monday morning, um, just so you at least had some audio with it. I know you guys are more than capable to read it and it wasn't long at all, but some audio with it, you at least got to hear me talk about the zooxanthellae and the corals. Okie doke. So nematocysts are their stinging cells. They are on the outside of their tentacles. The mouth is going to be the center and the stomach is going to be in the inside. The mouth is not an external or the stomach is not an external structure. And you can label any of them. It's not bad for not having a ruler. Okay. Um, the mouth. The mouth and their anus are the same thing. Label a tentacle. And definitely having care to touch the tentacle and not just the outside where the nematocyst is. Um, you guys had to do this skill today with the operculum and the lateral line. Oh gosh, I'm gonna butcher a fish real quick. Where a lateral line goes down the sides of its body. This is the operculum. This is the lateral line. All right, hopefully you guys made those labels with a ruler or it will not be the correct technique. I couldn't stress that enough. Uh, which one should I do? Ollie, will you let Sophie in, please? Please. Yes, please. Thank you, sweetheart. Good. And the nematocysts have, um, or nematocytes, those have the stinging cells in them. All right, that's that. There's four marks. And you could have labeled this one too. It's up to you. All right, you're looking at the granulated sea star um, on a reef. We've done this one in class as well. They're echinoderms. We don't want to mention anything about their skin, even though it's essentially what their skin means, spiky skin. Um, instead, put a charger on this. Instead, um, it's going to be what taken notes with. We, we have we done this question together. Um, 
Penta radial symmetry. So it means five. All right, and then they all have tubed feet. Two marks. Make a large drawing of the sea star shown. Um, only show the markings on one of the arms. Do not label your drawing. All right, so not to label it, use a sharp pencil. And obviously, erase any... Can you this game? It hasn't been 10 minutes, honey. Stray line. Can, can I just show you the game? Oh, it's for older girls. You gotta be 12. See, it says 12 plus. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'll abide. Please. Thank you. 12 is not a kid. It's an older kid. Okay. We need to have. Dun, dun, dun. All right. The, there's the marks for, for it. Thin line. And it's continuous. So. That's continuous. This is not. Sketching lines, it's hard to sketch on here. Um, that is not continuous. Those will be need to be erased. You can lightly sketch. Um, you can lightly sketch, and I demonstrated this for you in class um, with the stickleback fish, um, and then right posted that online. I also posted somebody else's uh, really good shark biological drawing. Um, you have all of those available to you on Google Classroom, so you have extra examples. Um, so it needs to be thin and continuous. You need to use at least half the space or more. In proportion. So this is where um, I showed you like with the stickle backfish. We wanted to like consider um, like where is the operculum compared to like their ventral fins? Um, where does their dorsal fin start and end compared to where the pelvic fin is, or if they even had an, an anal fin? Um, how many of the spines did it have on the top? What is the shape of the caudal fin? Those types of things. All right, and then um, attention to detail. And the detail they told you to do is um, only show markings on one of the arms. Okay, and we do not want to label it. Pay attention to the instructions as well, because um, you know right away you guys kind of got like super excited, like oh my gosh, I know the answer to the first one today on that test, the the box, um, and it said place a tick mark, which is a check mark, and they they did demonstrate you know, do a check. Um, but some of y'all just went to town and talked about the factors that can cause, um, like that oxygen to vary depending on, um, you know, was the temperature increasing, decreasing and increase the salinity, all that was chapter one stuff. Anyway, so highlight like the main instructions for sure. So do not label your drawing. Okay, sketch like drawing not appropriate, therefore the mark should not be awarded. No shading, no color. Half the space or more. Sorry, I'm just looking over some notes that I made of this. Okay. So if we consider like the center, let me change the color. If we consider the center, the arms are longer than they are wide. 
And they only want markings on one of the arms. So you choose. It's going to be the white part. Uh, okay. Let me erase it so I can see it all. Okay, if we zoom in, you can see that there is like this pentagon shape. I'm going to start that and build off from there and kind of extend out. Now, this is like not going to be the best way to demonstrate this for you because I'm obviously using an iPad. Um, but that's, you know, and I can't perfectly erase it with a pencil, but that's, that's what I'm going to do. Um, you want thin lines. You don't, you know, if I was drawing this out and then there was that sticking out, we want to erase that for sure. If, um, you know, this was the area I was trying to show detail on. I had that. We'll want to get rid of that. How old do you have to be? Yes. Thank you for whispering. Okay, now I am going to consider this in the middle. Follow these lines out. Follow these lines out. Follow these lines out. Follow these lines out. Follow that line out. This pentagon shape, though, if we notice, is kind of like that. I'm going to maybe change my pentagon up a bit. I, see, um, I guess it's better if I look at it like that. You totally fast forward through this if you're like, you already did it. I know some of you guys already have and you had me like check your work and. Remember everything are shapes. Everything's a shape. The example video I put of the shark, the guy like, you know, kind of started it actually like this. And then he built around it. But he put that line there first, not even to be like a lateral line, but just to um, just give him some guiding points. Okay, let me erase that. Everything's a shape. Don't start with details first, though. Start with your shape. Um, like this right here. That wouldn't be acceptable. That's not acceptable. That would need to be fixed. That would need to be fixed. But those are things I would definitely go in and do once I was like satisfied with the drawing. So continuous lines. And again, yeah, this, I mean, not using a pencil, so.
And notice here too, like this actually kind of comes out in front of this one. Okay, now I erase. You're, you can sketch in the beginning and just light sketches and that's gonna be it. Um, something I'm noticing here, and like this is things you can get at the end, like this is pretty much a straight line. And you guys have rulers too, so you can kind of put it in proportion. Um, this right now, the way it is, not a straight line. This one's a little short. And these are tedious. They are tedious, but I mean, you put some work into it. It's such an easy four marks. You know, you don't have to know how water bonds to itself. Um, that stuff was in, is it 1.1, 1.2? Bonding. You guys had notes over that. So hydrogen bonds, opposite ends, the partial negative, partial positive ends attracted to each other. Okay. It's worth it to attempt it and not get frustrated at it. Now this overlap here would have to go. That's not, it's not gonna fly, not for the Brits. Okay. Okay. Um, detail. Let's see. We don't need to include detail. I don't want to like be like, well, it's an iPad. I can't get it as good as I could with a pencil. So I'll attempt. All right. And then you don't need to include that, um, this like symmetry in the middle or that shape in the middle and do not include any detail. They said only show the markings on one of the arms. There's only one marking, it's just this white mark.
Um, I don't think as long as everything else was correct, they would take marks off for showing that um, shape in the middle. Or if you had like this. I don't recommend it though, because it is not the correct technique. I don't recommend it. All right, and I said show markings on one of the on one of the arms. I'll do this one. So I also want to consider that proportion. So if I look at like where it starts, like I guess there's kind of where the arm starts right here. There is more space from where it like starts at its body. It's like where this white mark is, right? Like their arms are longer than the white marking space. And what? Okay, it's bending in. It's curved the other way. Okay. I'm trying to stress over details, but all the lines are continuous, so there's no disconnect. Can't see any stray marks because I was able to erase it. All right, don't be tedious, don't be tedious. Okay, that's that's suitable. So I used um, at least half the space or more. It is in proportion. Um, and that's, you know, I, I did that right away. I said, well, we got this like, kind of see the structure right here, right now, like how compared to like the center, how long are the arms? How wide are the arms? How many are there, right, Penta? But they're longer than they were wide. And then built from there. That's my other heart. Okay. Okay, we did this in class together. Um, so you're looking at a species of butterfly fish. This is um, using a dichotomous key. You need to figure out what kind of organism it is. So dichotomous keys give you two contrasting statements um, to kind of like decipher and like, I guess essentially like weed one out from the other. Okay, so use the species or the diagram below to identify, use the key below to identify the species of butterfly fish. Um, more than half of the caudal fin is dark in color. I'll change my pen here. It's a caudal fin um, or a tail fin, right? Um, and then dolphins, whales, they have a fluke. That was not a part of your content though, but I did talk about that in class, the difference. These are like the caudal fin. Make it backwards, letter C. Um, or then less than, half a less than half the caudal fin is dark in color. Here's your color. And that is more than half, so we go to number two. Um, dark bands are through the dorsal fin. Or there's no dark bands through the dorsal fin. This is dorsal, means top of. Dorsal fin is like the telltale sign of like shark. That's also what you see in um, like killer whales or their dorsal fin gets flopped over in captivity. Um, dolphins, you also see their dorsal fins. Um, dolphins are how we can identify, their dorsal fins, how we can identify different, um, members in a pod. Their fins are unique, like, um, like a fingerprint. Um, oh, you had a question about that today with mark and recapture. Um, so hopefully the video I made a couple weeks ago is helpful. Um, cause I know it talked about the limits with it. I'm sure you're going to have to like actually do mark and recapture and, um, apply that Simpsons index to, uh, um, yeah, to, to um, Friday's test. There are no dark bands to the dorsal fin. This is the pelvic fin. This is the anal fin. They always have a pelvic fin, but if there's a second one, it's the anal fin. Pectoral, just like where 
like it's on the sides, like our, where our pectoral muscles would be. Operculum. And it doesn't seem like it has a visible lateral line, but I'm gonna put some common sense here and say it's what's actually splicing that lateral line. If I was labeling this, I would not label it like this because these are not horizontal. And I did not use care with straight lines. All right, pay close attention to how you write this because you know I'm notorious for writing capitalized. C, or you can put its actual genus name, Catodon, or you can do lowercase C. Lowercase T, I, F, A, S. And if you notice, all of these scientific names are italicized. Okay, describe one method that scientists could use to conduct a systematic survey of the reef. I did this on the review, um, the review that I hosted for you guys on Friday. So if you were online, then you got to see it. Um, and then also, like in class, I demonstrated it for you. Okay. Um, systematic, I covered that term in the separate lecture I made for you guys a couple weeks ago, um, over sampling. There is continuous and then systematic. Systematic, you are going to need to uh, have some sort of like interval. So you're not going to be uh, counting continuously. So if you were looking at it like you were going to say you were going to use like a line transect, and I'll actually just move back here and I'll pull it up. Here we go. Okay. Okay. So systematic sampling, you're counting at regular intervals. So you will need to take care to make sure this makes sense. You're not going to say every 25 feet. Like that's crazy. First of all, you're not going to say feet at all. You're going to be measuring in like the scientific way to measure. Um, and that's going to be in meters. Um, so you could say, now consider a meter stick, right? Like three, it's three and a half feet or so, 3.3, .3, three and a half, three and a half. Um, two meters is six feet. So three feet is the meter. Um, anyway, you're going to want to say like maybe every 0.25 meters or every 0.5 meters. Um, if you're going every meter, again, that's like three feet, you might be missing some pertinent information. Continuous sampling is if you use a line transect and you laid it out. So this is a good way to actually identify zonation on a rocky shore. Organisms will zone themselves based on like their tolerance, how much they can avoid predation and competition, and then how much they can withstand desiccation and being dried out. Continuous is you go along this entire line and every organism that's touching the line, you count, you include it. Um, so you include like how many you see, the relative size and the type of species it is. Um, this is better though, whenever you incorporate, like she is, whenever you incorporate a quadrat, not a quadrant, make sure you spell it right, a quadrat, because um, then you can kind of get more like, yes, along this entire line, this area. Um, you know, and she's looking at it on the left side of the line. It's totally fine to place it right here. So if you wanted to like look and see what was inside this tidal pool, or you can place it like in the middle of it and look on both sides. But anyways, um, it, this allows, if you have the quadrat there, this does allow for assessing greater species abundance. Um, and, and you know, exactly what I said, like how many are in there, not just like what type where you might just get on the, on just the standard line. Um, what she's using is a belt transect because of the line and then your quadrat on it, it ends up looking a bit like a belt. Transect, like if you're gonna like sect something, dissect, transect, you're gonna like cut through it. Um, and then a systematic survey here is you're looking every 
counting interval and you decide what that interval is, it just needs to make sense. It needs to like have some, some sense with it. All right. Go back to the original one. Paper two. So one method. Sometimes you conduct systematic survey of the reef. We're not going to do mark and recapture because there's no sense in marking a coral, possibly damaging it, letting it go for a certain time, and then come back. Like it's still going to be there. They don't move. They're non sessile or they're non mobile organisms. We would say they're sessile. They are um, attached to their substrate. So mark and recapture wouldn't make sense, but you can definitely use the. Um, random sampling method or like a systematic sampling method. And I did um, do this answer in class on Friday. Okay, so we can say, thank you. Um, you can, within this, you could say, uh, Specifically, you could say a belt transect, or you could say a line transect. You can see that if you have, if you look at the mark scheme, you can see on the side. I believe it says A, like accept. A means accept, um, like allow it, allow them to say that a belt or a line transect. Um, and then you can also use a quadrat. You can throw that in there too. It's not a quadrant. It's not a graph. It's a quadrat. Um, the, and this would definitely be indicative of the belt. So there's your line transect. You know how long it is. And then, you know, if you're going to sample here, then you, you, you decide that, but you just maintain it continuous. Then you would sample on this side the whole way. Not continuous. Um, keep that constant. Or if you wanted to do it on this side, fine. If you wanted to do it in the middle, fine. You would just maintain that the entire way. And that just kind of throws out any bias because you might see a tide pull right here and you're like, oh, wait, hold on. I want to sample that area. But then that's that's not going to give you a very valid reading. It's going to be a lot of bias. So we can use the quadra. Okay. And when you do that, you got to make, make some mention of sampling in a systematic way. So you don't want to say sample in a systematic way. Those things are too vague. They're not going to fly. Same with saying like suitable water temperature, like what's suitable? You need to like put some um, some knowledge to it. For example, for corals, their tolerance is, tw or their favorite is 23 to 25. Um, so suitable doesn't work. And uh, suitable depth, like what's suitable, right? Like for a benthic organism that can live in like low oxygen, that could be, you know, 500 meters. For um, a photosynthesizer, you want to live in the like probably top 150. So suitable needs to have some knowledge to it. Okay. And this is about the reef. So this all the organisms there. Reef is a very stable ecosystem. Um, it is uh, stable and not extreme. Sample organisms present every, and this is your call, so it's got to make sense though. 0.5 meters. Maybe you want to say every one meter. Reef is pretty big. The example that I posted on that assignment that I was looking at. This one right here, how to conduct a coral reef survey. Awesome video. It's only eight minutes long and they do this. They actually show all the sampling methods, obviously not random sampling, or I'm sorry, not mark and recapture because you're not going to mark the corals. Then I think that's like unethical. All right. And then once you do that, so right, you're like, I'm going to go every 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And this, I, totally encourage you guys to draw this out. Like if any time, anytime they're like, oh, we put, you know, uh, like, like the cockle example, we put um, some burrowing cockles in a tank and we wanted to see, you know, how fast 
they were able to burrow and I think they gave them like two hours or something. Yeah, they did give them two hours. I draw it out. Like I try and like make myself a vision, like what would that look like? So they filled it with sediment. They'll give you a picture of the organism. What would that look like? And it's not so arbitrary. All right, and so when you do that, you're gonna put your quadrat wherever you want, right? You're gonna do it again. But once it's in there, you're going to count all of the species that are present. The amount of them, the different types. Okay, you're not going to do this once because you're not going to say, well, I took one sample and here's the organisms that are present. No way. That's not going to be an accurate sample at all. You're not going to do it once. You're going to do it multiple times. The more times you do it, as you know from just like having like middle school math class or just not math class, but um, science class or just regular science classes, the more times you do this, the more times you have a sample, the better average you're going to get. And yeah, math class too. I meant to charge my headphones. Um, and then I'm going to flip back over to that assignment I made a few weeks ago. Um, I also discuss new for paper two, and you guys got this handed out in class, um, each sampling technique and when describing these processes, it's new for paper two. You definitely want to have um, an ethical mention, right? So don't break the corals. Um, don't remove any corals from their area. Um, limiting your collection of empty shells, which is totally me. Don't take seaweed from their area. If you're working together, like make sure you're working with the class, make sure that you're sharing your data so that you're not having to repeat the same area and disrupt the habitat. Um, can also include some safety measures. Anytime they're asking you to do like a procedure like this, that's gonna be a good way to get an extra mark. So like double check the weather or, um, you know, make sure you're wearing sunscreen if you're going to be out in the elements or in the field or in the sun for a while. Um, dress in layers so that maybe, you know, if it's getting warmer, you can take some layers off. It's harder to get, um, you know, it's harder to put clothes on when you don't have them if the temperature is going down. You would not write that on your test. Ethical practice. I'm just telling you like to include one there. So do not remove corals from the habitat. Um, oh, here's one. Uh, I didn't talk about this in class. It's not part of your content, but I mean, just, you may know this from like global perspectives or just, um, living in the world. Um, some sunscreens are actually causing there to be less sun penetration, kind of like, uh, polluting the water a bit because the sunscreens, they are oil based and they will travel to the top layer of the water. Um, and then ultimately, because they're oil-based, they're going to stay at the top. And so when you have light penetration coming through from the sun, only a little bit can come through and a lot of it's going to get repelled because that's literally what sunscreen does. So that actually is, there's sunscreen bands in, um, oh, excuse me. There are sunscreen bands in Hawaii and um, major like coral-based areas. And I can't remember what the name of it was that's in it. Oh, oxybenzone. Oxybenzone. Okay. 
finish this one off. Don't take girls from the habitat. Um, where non oxybenzone or environmentally okay cool um i'm gonna charge up my headphones a little bit and then we'll do this graph you've already done this graph in the first semester but i'll do it with you again we've also had to describe the data um but again i'll do that with you again and awesome this one i already did on a separate lecture question eight i did all of it um it's right here so i'm probably not going to um talk it out again but because that's just not an efficient use of my time or your time. Um, so you've already heard it. You've already seen it. It's on YouTube. Okay. I'm gonna take a break.